Hi guys, bringing you a video today on the British Issue Survival Suit, primarily a Royal Navy issue item, but also issued to other shipboard personnel. Uh, we have here a mannequin in Falklands War foul weather clothing, so we have a foul weather jacket, a white roll neck sweater underneath. We have the Mark III life jacket on its waist belt here, which I have done a previous video on, uh, so if you're interested in seeing that, I'll put a card up in the corner of the video, uh, you can go and watch that as well. And unslung underneath the life jacket is the pouch for the survival suit. And this is a 1960s dated suit, but they were used right through the Falklands. And we have some 1990s dated examples we're going to have a look at that a little bit later in the video that are slightly modified. I'm not entirely sure on the introduction date of this. It could well be 1950s as opposed to 1960s. I'd be interested to know if anyone does know. Please do let me know in the comments. I'd be very happy to correct it on, uh, be corrected on the date if I've got that wrong. Likewise, the slightly modified 1990s examples, I'm not sure when they went out of service or if they are indeed still in service. I can I can only imagine something a bit more advanced has come into use now, but I could be wrong. Uh, so if anyone knows, please do let me know in the comments. The reason for having this mannequin in the Falklands War era, foul weather jacket and so forth, is it's one of the few times that re these really show up in photographs, because obviously uh, the Falklands was a high risk uh, theatre in terms of ships being badly damaged and indeed sunk, uh, as proved to be the case. And so having a survival suit on you was a, was a very important aspect of protective, protective equipment. Um, as well as the life jacket, obviously. So uh, we'll have a look now at the pouch, and the details of the pouch, and I'll get the suit out and on the mannequin, well, draped over the mannequin, and we'll have a look at it. So uh, have a look at the pouch first. Okay, we can see the pouch here, and you've got the two press studs at the front here to keep the flap closed. Obviously it's suspended upside down so the suit can be dropped out of it very easily. Uh, photographs from the Falklands campaign show elastic bands uh, being used to help keep, presumably to help keep the flap closed. Uh, when you're moving around it's possible this could get snagged or just gravity pull it open and the suit drop out so this prevents that from happening that's my guess anyway from looking at the photographs um, if we bring the camera up to the side here you can see the uh, webbing the cotton webbing strap there with the lifted up fastener to attach the uh, pouch for the survival suit onto the belt of the life jacket and sling it underneath there and if we come back around here i will just remove these open the flap and in theory at least the suit should just slide out, which it will. And I will show you the suit in just a second. But if I bring the camera in here and turn it round, you can see the label inside the pouch there. And you can see 1963 there and all the information on the uh, label inside the pouch. So here we have the suit and you can see the maker's label up there in the neck opening. Uh, it's a one piece item, as you can see. Uh, the, it has to be pulled on uh, from, put the legs in and pull the torso up over. Uh, using the large neck opening here, which can then be closed in using this draw cord on the with a rubber stop on there. So you just pull pull that in tight and tighten up that uh, rubber stopper there to uh, keep it together. The hood itself is elastic, so from here the hood, the top of the hood there is elastic. Let's bring the mannequin back in to put this back on. I'm getting talc everywhere. This still has been cleaned, but still has a bit of talc on it. Um, there is a, a single pocket on the outside on the front of the left leg here. I'll bring this up here, put my hand in, you can see there with three drainage holes across the bottom. Uh, not entirely sure what that's for, if it's for a specific purpose to hold something specific, but that is uh, included there. Uh, the arms uh, end in rubber seals for the wrists, so the cuffs are open up there and provide something of a rubber seal around the, the wrists there. And this one over here has a small stamp on it, which may be an inspection stamp, I'm not sure, 49 there with uh, something GR stamped around there, NGR possibly, or SGR. I'm not entirely sure what that uh, that, entail, that uh, signifies or entails, but if anyone knows, I'd be interested to know as well. So if you could put that in the comments, if you happen to know, happen to have been issued these and possibly know. Uh, moving down the legs, we have at the base, uh, the, the foot is just simply molded in. There's no reinforcement in the bottom. It's all just this rubberized canvas material in obviously this bright day glow orange color uh, for visibility's sake. There's reinforcing pieces there uh, on the back of the leg with uh, these tapes stitched to them, just cotton webbing tape. And the idea of that is that when you're wearing it, you can tie the legs in tighter around your own legs to keep uh, everything together and keep make the suit a little bit less cumbersome. There's another one down at the ankle here. So just below the knee, uh, the ankle on the leg there to draw the leg in um, and make the suit fit a bit better. At the rear of the heel of the foot, there's a uh, little stopper here and a rubber um, 
outlet there so you can allow water i understand this is to allow water to drain from the suit if you've been in the in the in the water and you make a life raft you you get to a life raft uh, once you're in you can allow any water that's got into the suit to drain out here i've also found that undoing these before folding the suits up uh, allows air to get out because otherwise it tends to inflate a bit like a balloon if the air can't get out through the neck opening and then obviously fasten them back up again so the suit is ready to put on don't know if that's part of the design but i found that useful when folding it back up again and putting it away um the suit itself uh, is is completely waterproof from this point of view however uh, obviously the, the wrist seals may not be in completely perfect and also the neck opening is the weakest point of the suit um, I know from training, uh, talking to veterans of the Royal Navy from the Falklands era, uh, training stated that you should always try and get straight from your ship into a life raft if you've been given the order to abandon ship as opposed to entering the water and then climbing into a life raft uh, because you are, it is basically inevitable you're going to end up with some water in the suit, much as it is far better to go into the water wearing this than it is just wearing a uniform and a life jacket, it's not perfect by any means and, and no suit used for this sort of uh, situation is going to keep all the water out uh, unless it's a modern uh, immersion suit and um, this obviously this is a much simpler design than that design for emergency use not uh, a purpose design immersion suit for wear on a regular basis uh, hence the once only suit uh, nickname so uh, there it is and quite a simple design I just turn it around you can see I'll show you the back there's not really much to see here uh, there's just another seam down the back there and it's just plain as I say this bright orange color obviously for visibility's sake for, for uh, air sea rescue and so on. Okay so here we have the label and you can see the nomenclature there is suit to survival and then top right the size medium and then the vocab number beneath that it's a little bit unclear but the year of manufacture the date of manufacture is the 5th of July 1963 and as you can see it's made by the Dunlop Rubber Company in Manchester. Here you can see a group of Royal Navy ratings on the journey south towards the Falklands uh, with one trying on a once-only suit during training. And this photograph clearly shows the suit suspended beneath the life jacket on its waist belt, this time tucked around the back alongside the S6 respirator haversack. We'll look now at the 1990s design that I have. I have a couple of examples from the 1990s and they um, have a, slightly, uh, a slight change to the design to make the visibility even better. Uh, the high visibility nature of it even better. So uh, we'll have a look at those now. So here we have a 1990s example of the suit, the survival suit. The suit is essentially the same with a small difference, which we'll see in a moment. The pouch likewise is essentially the same. Uh, the only real difference is that the side straps are no longer made of cotton webbing. They're now made of nylon. Uh, the lifter dot and the fastener is the same and everything there. It's the same design, just with a more modern material for the straps on the side. Marked on the top L, this is a large size suit and that marks this out as being a large unlike the 60s one we've just looked at, which is a medium, of course. If I open this up, and I'm going to cover myself in talc now, but uh, never mind. Let's remove this from the pouch. You can see if I put it against the 60s suit there, it's a slightly brighter colour, a uh, slightly brighter pinker orange. And the only difference with the design, and you can see talc going everywhere there, because this has not really been out of the pouch much. I have had it unfolded, but outside it's still covered in talc. The hood has the silver... Uh, high visibility strips on it which obviously from the, that's going to be the highest point out of the water is your head and that just adds a little more to the visibility uh, the high visibility aspect of the, the design there is to have these reflective silver strips just as you get on um, modern day glow uh, high visibility uh, jackets and uh, vests uh, so just that addition there uh, these suits this this dates from 1992 there's no uh, date stamp in the suit but I have one and this one came in uh, the original primary packaging so I'll show you that one now and we can see the uh, the labels there which uh, show the date and everything like that so I have this example here which is in its primary packaging uh, still it's also a size large you can see the L on the top there and the label states large as well um, over where we're looking here uh, suit survival large um, you've got uh, the uh, date packed of 992 and then over here uh, the year of manufacture 1992 and you've got the contract number there, and the contractor is ML Lifeguards. So um, there we are. And I say the 90s example, 90s dated example, very, very similar, just uh, with the slight addition of the, the change to the straps on the side, and the slight addition to the, the day glow, the um, high visibility part of the design in having the silver uh, strips on the hood there, but otherwise very, very similar. And here we have the label in the 1992 dated suit, as you can see. 
uh, with all the information there and the NATO stock number and so forth. So there it is, a 1960s dated British survival suit, as I say, used right through the Falklands uh, into the 1990s, slightly modified as we saw. Quite an important piece of kit, obviously, during the Falklands campaign and not common to see around. So hopefully getting this out there in video form uh, is of interest to people. Um, as I always say, I do hope you found the video interesting. Uh, if you haven't already, check out the Facebook group, which there's a link for in the description. And also, if you like the videos and would like to see more in the future, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button so you get notified of when I uh, upload videos in the future. And uh, until next time, bye for now.